Here is a quick guide to playing Xenomorph in Dead by Daylight. I've got five tips and tricks I'm going to elaborate on during this video. And I hope you guys enjoy, hope it helps. Um, and just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional. <laughs> but I have been practicing Xenomorph since the release of the Alien DLC. So um, I hope I've got a little bit more experience under the belt that I can give you guys and share. Um, just to help your game up and hopefully make you a better Xenomorph player. Let's get right into it then. The first pointer that I'm going to be talking about is map pressure. Now, Xenomorph has a lot of it. Um, it can travel very quickly uh, through the tunnels that are provided around the map. Um, very, very quickly. I'm not entirely sure the speed underground, um, but substantially quick to the point where it's incredibly quick from the start of the game to simply reach a tunnel and travel across the map to, to find a survivor quite early on, um, which is why Lethal Pursuer is quite a good perk to use. As a result of that, it's always wise to not stick to one survivor for too long um, and prolong a chase out too much. The element of surprise does help with this killer. Um, tunnel locations tend to spawn near the generators that are provided around the map, so it is always useful to um, leave a survivor if you feel like the chase is lasting too long or you're not going to be able to get a hit for too much longer um, and, and come back another time and provide pressure elsewhere on the map. It's always key for you to be uh, keeping an eye out on all the generators to make sure one doesn't get popped too quickly um, and, and just to try to keep the survivors on their toes. It sometimes really is just best to leave a survivor mid-chase and to just come back another time um, and try and provide a lot of map pressure on other aspects of the map that survivors are going to be working through generators on instead. Don't stay too focused on one survivor. Um, this is the sort of killer that is more useful in a hit and run sense. Not as much as other killers like a Legion for example, but um, it is very useful sometimes to just leave the 1v1 and to apply pressure on maybe two or three other, other survivors that will be working on a generator and maybe across the other side of the map instead of them popping the generator. As a result of Xenomorph's map pressure because of the speed it can travel in tunnels, it's always wise to run a perk like Discordance just so that you can see the auras of generators that are being worked on so that you know where to go next, especially if you've just gotten a hook. It's very useful for those sort of situations. Same with a perk like Barbecue and Chili will give you a lot, a lot of information that you can use to your advantage with Xenomorph a lot more and a lot quicker than other killers. The second tip and trick that I'm going to be talking about is a bit more elaborate than the other points on this video, um, and that is to do with the tail. So if anybody doesn't know, the Xenomorph's tail is a, an ability, a function that it can use when you have built up the power for the killer, which is Hidden Pursuit. And basically what that does is it reduces your terror radius, it puts you, your character on all fours, a bit lower down on the map, and it allows you to use your tail as a secondary attack. Now this can be very useful uh, in certain situations, but it is quite difficult to use. Um, and from experience, there are some very, very weird situations where some attacks look like they should hit and they don't. Now this tail attack that is gained can be very awkward to use in a lot of situations, but it also can be very useful when used in the right situation. Um, one main thing to worry about with, with dragging the tail is don't move your mouse to use the attack. Try and move a bit like how you would with Nemesis's whip. Moving sideways with your attack will cause a bit more attack coverage with the tail so that you can cover a bit more of an area that the survivor is going to be moving into in order to get the validation, the hit that you need. Another situation that's very useful to use the tail attack especially is when a survivor is going to be vaulting a pallet or a window. Now this is very useful because it's locked them into an animation and as a result it makes their hitbox very predictable. You know whereabouts it's going to be so it can make it a lot easier for you uh, especially when going around corners um, to reactively use your tail attack uh, and swipe them as they're vaulting. One last very important thing to mention is the range of the tail attack. Now the range is 4.8 meters, which isn't the longest range for a killer attack. It's not like a death slinger harpoon. So you need to be very tactical in terms of knowing when you should be able to make the lunge for the tail attack. This isn't the longest, like I say, so it's not great to be able to use, especially when a survivor is holding W and just running away. If a survivor is running around a loop that maybe you can hit over, um, or maybe going back and forth on quite an open pallet that you might be able to hit across, that is the sort of time where it might be useful for you to make the tail attack and try and hit them on the other side of the pallet instead of allowing them to run away. Um, a lot more experienced survivors may not fall for this and may just create distance. Um, like I say, holding W on this killer and running away, just away from loops is 
very viable and very valid, uh, which is why coming in and using the map pressure, using the tunnels, is, is ideal, is the sort of thing that you need to be doing. Now, the third tip that I'm going to be talking about is tunnel queues. Now, this is very, very useful when you are using the tunnels, when you're actually in the underground realm that traverses from tunnel to tunnel entrance. The first part of this is that footsteps show up as orange circles when the survivors are running across on the ground. These footsteps are really good sources of information because it can allow you to kind of plot in your head whereabouts survivors would be on the map. Um, you don't even necessarily have to be actually going and chasing them, um, but it's good to understand, especially if maybe you're heading towards uh, a place where you know two survivors might be healing, for example, or on a generator. If you see another survivor running in another direction on the way over, it's good for you to plot in your head a kind of mental image as to where other survivors will be. And this will really allow you to accelerate your game um, and not waste so much time in between hooks to try and find another survivor, especially if you're not running the sort of perks or maybe the perks aren't giving you the information that you need at the time. Another very important thing to mention when you're inside the tunnel is that you can hear the gen progression. Um, if you're standing underneath an actual tunnel exit, uh, when you're underground, you can actually hear the progression, the speed at which a gen is, is currently working at to determine kind of how far along the gen is from being complete. And this is very useful in order for you to prioritize maybe which generator you should visit next. And listening to the generator being repaired can give you a very, very quick start at the beginning of a game if you're not running a perk like Lethal Pursuer or you don't have any other way to determine where a survivor would be uh, at the beginning of a game. If you can hear the generator being repaired very early on, it's a very sure sign and it's a good way to start your game. Now the fourth point that I want to touch upon is endgame patrolling. Now this killer is incredibly strong, again, as a result of the tunnels and the speed that you can traverse underground. It's very, very easy for you to be able to keep tabs on both exit gates uh, at the end of a game, especially if you're in the end game and you've closed the hatch. You're able to literally sit inside these tunnels, um, maybe in the middle. If you're running a perk like No Way Out, you can wait for a notification on one of the exit gates and then just travel straight to it. Um, equally, if you're not running that sort of perk, you can very quickly go into a tunnel close to where an exit gate is, traverse to the next one, come back up, and vice versa very quickly and there won't be enough time for the survivor to be able to open a gate if you're doing that efficiently enough. In my opinion Xenomorph is one of the most powerful killers in endgame especially in these sort of situations because it's so easy for you to be able to try and keep tabs on both exit gates. Unlike slower killers like Huntress for example um, if you don't have line of sight on both exit gates it's very difficult for you to be able to keep tabs and you kind of have to guess where a survivor is going to be as opposed to Xenomorph where you can very easily traverse the map and find the survivor either way. Now the fifth and final point that I want to talk about are turrets. Now this is the counterplay that survivors can use in order to take the Xenomorph out of its power. Um, and cause it to stand back up on two legs, on its hind legs, uh, walk a bit slower, have a bigger terror radius, not be able to use the tail attack, etc. Now, there are certain times when it is best for you to be able to destroy a turret. From what I've discovered, especially when you're coming out of a tunnel, when the turrets are disabled for a short period of time, you're not able to destroy these turrets. Um, you have to wait for them to turn back on before you swing to attack them. I'm not entirely sure why that is. It does seem like a bug, and I'm assuming they might fix that. However, in the event that that isn't a bug and it is an actual feature, um, it is best for you to wait until the turret is automatically re-enabled again before swinging and attacking to destroy the turret. Another situation where you maybe wouldn't want to destroy a turret is if an injured survivor is in front of you. Maybe you're already in a chase with the survivor and the turret is within range. Maybe the survivor is running through towards the radius that the turret is enabled and starts attacking you. If you're within range of the survivor, it might be best for you to quite literally just attack them and focus them, focus on getting them down and then conceding your ability afterwards. Um, as opposed to attacking the turret to get rid of the turret, you might lose a lot more distance between you and the survivor, uh, which might allow them to get away or get to the next loop. As long as you're near a tunnel, you can lose your ability and go back underground where it recovers your ability so much quicker when you're moving underground, um, as opposed to being above ground. So don't be afraid to lose your ability in situations where you might be able to actually down a survivor, because you can recover it quite quickly afterwards anyway. 
in conclusion, I don't think the Xenomorph is an entirely strong killer. Um, I think it's okay. I think it's relatively balanced. However, somebody that does understand the mechanics behind the tail attack, somebody that does practice a lot, would very likely get very good at playing Xenomorph um, and allow them to really have an edge, especially when survivors are looping the Xenomorph um, and when you have a good perk build that allows you to maintain a lot of map pressure. Please utilize the tunnels. It's very useful to travel across map to find the next survivor very quickly and to just, in general, gain information. Gain your ability back, gain uh, the knowledge of maybe where a survivor is repairing a generator or even where the survivor is running because of the footsteps. So it's very useful to use these tunnels to your advantage as often as you can, really. And sometimes it really is just easier to use the M1, use the basic attack instead of using the tail it's not very good for reactive movement. Um, so if a survivor is close range trying to dodge an anticipated tail attack, just use the M1. Um, don't waste too much time on it. Um, the tail really is very useful for trying to hit over uh, vaults and loops um, and not necessarily close range. So bear that in mind when you're trying to use your tail. Sometimes it's easier and, and wastes a lot less time just using your basic attack when they're nearby. And that is it for my tips and tricks video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it helped and I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Leave me some feedback as well. Maybe there's something I missed out that might be useful for other people in the comments section. So leave a comment and help some other people out. And other than that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and maybe check out one of my other videos. See you later.